We present the moving least squares material point method for efficient simulation of various physical phenomena. MLSMPM unifies the affine and polynomial particle and cell methods and force discretization in a weak form consistent way. As a result, MLSMPM is not only two times faster than traditional MPM, but also easier to implement and optimize. We further introduce CPIC, a compatible particle and cell transfer scheme. CPIC augments traditional MPM with displacement discontinuity, which is essential to cutting simulations, and enables efficient two-way coupling between MPM particles and dynamic rigid bodies. To motivate our method, let's first consider the limitations of traditional grid-based level sets on a 2D cutting example. A moving thin level set will either be treated as a collider or completely ignored by the material. Putting the level set directly inside also doesn't work, since the interpolated velocity field is still continuous. Other common approaches include particle deletion and softening. However, due to the fuzzy nature of MPM kernels, a significant amount of particles must be deleted for separation. Softening creates unpleasant artifacts. In contrast, our approach handles both gradual and instant cutting with no problem. The capability of our method is due to the colored distance field, a natural generalization of traditional signed distance field to non-closed and intersecting boundaries. Firstly, we compute grid CDF by rasterizing rigid boundaries. Then, we reconstruct particle CDF using moving least squares. A particle is compatible to grid nodes sharing the same relative position to the boundaries. With particles and grid CDF information, CPIC rasterizes particle mass, momentum, and MLS-MPM force to compatible grid nodes. This allows particles on different sides of boundaries to be completely decoupled. During grid-to-particle transfer, each particle gathers a least squares estimation of its local velocity field from compatible nodes. This first-order approximation is used as both the affine velocity field for APIC and the velocity gradient for strained update. Finally, we advect particles and rigid boundaries. CDF consists of two parts, the color, which is the relationship to neighboring boundaries, and the value, which is the distance to the closest boundary. For each boundary, the color is gained once the particle approaches it, and will be persistent until the particle moves away. When the particle moves through the boundary, it will maintain the color while the distance will be negative. Here we visualize the life cycle of CDF. It starts with rigid boundaries and rasterizes to grid efficiently via rigid boundary particles. Note that when boundaries intersect, CDF will still be correctly handled. Particles update their color based on gridged CDF information and then reconstruct the distance and normal using moving least squares. Note that the reconstruction is robust even when information on some grid nodes is missing. 